Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. And, Pastor, today my question centers on discernment. And uh, I was flipping through the channels uh, the other night, and I came across this, this person who was on TV claiming that he had the answer to brokenness, to depression, uh, almost to salvation, but all you had to do was send a donation of $1,500, and will you'll get a prayer napkin. And when you receive this napkin, it's going to give you the power to unleash the power of God. It's the key to use, but send the seed money in. Well, I was thinking, there's nobody that's going to fall for this. And this person was saying, all I need is $1,500 from 15 people here in the audience. I'm thinking, there's no way people are going to do that. And I was amazed by how many people came. And not only there, but online were paying. They had a little clicker that showed all the amounts of money. And it was spinning fast. And I'm thinking about that. And then I think about, uh, then there's people out there who, it sounds like sound doctrine. It looks like sound doctrine. Therefore, it must be sound doctrine. But there may be a little bit of a twist and yet people are not discerning that. So you see one extreme, and then you see the other extreme. How important is, is it for us believers, especially in today's world, that we have discernment? You know, the Lord said, blessed are the ones who are uh, hungry, those who are thirsty, you know, for righteousness and all that. And I, I, I think that the hunger and the thirst for the things of God are the things that, it, it, that's what motivates you to search Him out, to, to begin to discover, um, you know, not only what the Word says, but how it actually applies to our life. And because there are quite a number of people who, who sadly, sadly, are not going to a church that teaches line upon line and actually is teaching the Word, what they end up with is they end up with uh, cotton candy. <laughs> you know, when you used to go to the, the fair and, and it, you have this, this large amount of what appears to be candy, you know, and it turns out it just evaporates the minute that you put it in your mouth. That's what a lot of the, the teaching that people actually are attempting to live on, that's what a lot of the teaching really is. It's just cotton candy. It's, it's a lot of appearance with no substance. So a man who's up there lying like that to the people is disgusting. The Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 23 made it very clear that there were charlatans even in his day. He says they devour widows' houses and for a pretense they make long prayers. And, and so we, we have that today. We have blind guides. And uh, blind guides who are leading people into ditches right now. Because people don't read the Word of God on their own, seeking the Lord for wisdom in what they're reading. Not to say that just by reading you'll have a depth of knowledge. It requires study too. But I think a lot of people are not, one, is they're not reading the Word. And so when something is said, and even though if it's misquoted or sounds close to what they have read in the past, they, they automatically just entrust themselves to it. And also, because these false teachers carry the air of authority, you know, they make these promises. You send your money, $1,500, because somehow God has given me that number that you're supposed to give to me. So even though freely I received and freely I should give, no, not in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell you his promises and all of that. And then finally, also, I consider the, those little monitors of money coming in. Who knows if that's really money coming in? It's just, a, to me, it's just something spinning around. Cause so I, I think that that's a, a come on too. I think it's part of the chicanery that you're seeing online. Who's, who, who, how, how are you able to prove to me that that actually is happening? That money really is coming in, right? And so... There are gullible people, but there are also people who are plants in audiences, John. Mm -hmm. So these people say, yeah, I'm going to give you this money, and then after the show, they get their money back. It's, it's just, it's a sham. It's, it's just wrong. And so, but we have it. We have a lot of that. So what do we do? Well, one, spend time in the Word of God yourself. Two, 
be aware that when Lord Jesus Christ was asked, what are the signs of your coming? In Matthew uh, chapter uh, 24 and in, in Mark chapter 13 and other places in the Gospel of Luke and all, they speak concerning what is the sign of the times and, and when you're to, to, uh, about to return. And Jesus, the first thing he says is take heed, Matthew 24, take heed that no one deceives you. What is the primary sign that we are in the last days? Well, Paul said the day will come when people will no longer endure healthy doctrine, but will heap unto themselves teachers, having itching ears, and will be turned aside from the truth and turned unto fables. Peter gave the same warning. There were false prophets among the people. There will be false teachers among you. The number one sign of the, the last days the number one sign isn't the earthquakes. It's not Russia moving against Israel. Those are all part of it. The number one sign, Jesus said, is deception. And how do you know what is true and what is false? You know, Spurgeon once said, and I'm paraphrasing, he said, discernment isn't being able to tell truth from error. Discernment is being able to tell truth from what is almost true. That's, that's true discernment because what they're giving sounds true, but discernment gives us the ability to say there's something wrong here, though. That is not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's why they used to say, I don't know if they do or not. You went to jail, you tell me. <laughs> when they used to say, um, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Why did they say that? Because you can say some things that are true. So... That doesn't mean you're saying the whole truth. So you have to say things that are truth, that are whole truths, and then nothing but the truth. That's why they say it like that. The truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. They're trying to make it in such a way that you're caught. You have to tell only the truth, right? Well, a lot of people may hear the truth, but it's not the whole truth, and it's nothing but the truth. And that's where this, this charlatan that is robbing widows and robbing those who can least afford it. I, I have nothing but, but disgust for that and anger. Jesus got upset when the charlatans were in the temple selling sacrifices to the poor pilgrims who were coming to sacrifice during Passover and he cleansed the temple. He did it twice. It's my father's house should be a house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. Well, that's what's happened to the church. But, you know, judgment comes first on the house of God. And so these guys may be living well right now, but I don't even know if they know Jesus. How can you, how can you love Jesus and not love those whom he loves? How can, how can you steal from people like that how can you take see my mom was my mom was crippled for years she died a cripple you know she wanted to believe that 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 she could be healed and these people she wanted to and i never wanted to steal from her the hope of being healed because my god is the healer but i warned her against and 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 kept her from giving money to these charlatans cuz she asked me you know da, she used to call me daddy she said so daddy if i send some money so no mama don't do that Mama, don't do that because they're, they're, they're profiting off of you in your pain. No, we can pray. Our God is the same God. We can pray and ask our God to touch your body. And if he does, bless him. If he doesn't, then, then that's up to him. And she accepted that to the very end of her life. Let's just trust the Lord. I wish that the Lord would have healed her many times. I, I prayed for her since I was four years old. Even as a non-believer, I believed in that. God, please, God, help my mother. And when I was 20 and I got saved, I, I prayed for her until she died. God helped my mama. My dad prayed as a believer for mama, and, and she was not ever physically healed. But we rejoiced to know that now she is. Yeah. She's completely healed. So again, getting back to your, your original question, John, I really think that, uh, that it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame on, uh, on the body of Christ. It's, 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 it's a blasphemous to, to be making false promises and profiting off of the people, and the Lord doesn't take kindly to that. 
And this is why it's so important that we stay in God's Word. Stay in the Word. That we're able to discern these deceptions. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor, and go to a church that teaches. Yes, because there are a lot of churches that say, oh, I'm teaching you. When in fact you're getting whatever was in the newspaper yesterday. <laughs> and they think they're able to discern. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Pastor, thank you so much for that. And that was something because I, I think about these people. And, and on the other side of that, these people have the opportunity to rightly divide God's Word. And there's no fear in that. There's none at all. Well, Pastor, thank you again. Thank you guys for tuning in. Do want to invite you tomorrow uh, evening to uh, Christafari. I almost said Rastafari. Yeah. Christafari, which is going to be our guest worship for tomorrow evening, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Uh, and then again on Sunday at 10 for 8.30 and 10.45. And we look forward to having you. Amen. So, Pastor, thank you again. Of thank course. you guys for tuning in. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.